Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Serge Kernbach from Stuttgart, Germany. Uh, unfortunately, I, can, I cannot come uh, to this uh, important event. Uh, in a few days, uh, we have a large exhibition here. But uh, we uh, strongly uh, support this initiative. It's, it's, uh, it's taken in the right time. Uh, we contribute uh, with demonstration, with our sensing technologies, uh, with devices. And this presentation uh, goes along this line. I would like to demonstrate the uh, importance of unconventional technologies, especially this area of informational pharmacology, and uh, show the history that was taken uh, for almost uh, the whole uh, 20th century in the Soviet Union. The original version of this presentation uh, was submitted to uh, archive.org and uh, it uh, appeared in 2013 December and after this time a number of uh, mass media sources uh, took this uh, publication and uh, created uh, a number of uh, secondary reports that um, uh, devoted to the topic of unconventional phenomena and unconventional research in US, in uh, Soviet Union and uh, in the modern Russia. So it seems that uh, the whole uh, topic is still of a large public interest. It needs to say that um, the original publication and of course this presentation is based on uh, published sources. So for instance in the paper we had about 120, uh, 100, over 120 uh, historical and scientific uh, references. So in uh, publication after uh, this um, was about in total over 400 references. So there's a number of book that, that appears after this. Uh, for instance, this uh, supernatural or ESP wars. So everything what is said, uh, written, uh, can be verified uh, based on these references. Speaking about um, unconventional research program, I need to say that uh, there is uh, there are many uh, different open and uh, classified programs still classified. Uh, the whole program appear in the competition, at least in the uh, second part of the uh, 20th century, uh, century. It's a strong competition with US. And there is, um, to some extent, a curious fact of, uh, of appearance of this program in 60s, uh, based on this uh, publication in French journal. Uh, the story was about uh, performing some telepathic experiments with uh, submarines. And this story was extremely seriously considered in the Soviet Union, uh, started corresponding programs, and then uh, this uh, returned back to US. And it seems that uh, both countries uh, used this I mean, stories for uh, justification of funding. Well, uh, investment uh, in the rough estimation uh, is uh, between half of billion and one billion. It should be uh, clear that uh, basically uh, there are no uh, exact numbers. Uh, the rough estimation and uh, we think that the real number are larger because we have no access to classified program. It need also to say that the whole program is not a parapsychology. This is important. There is no mystery, no vitalism. Uh, Soviet ideology asks for proven evidences. And uh, the, uh, the really strong focus was uh, on, uh, put on technology and technological development and combination of devices and operator. And exactly this point uh, make a specificity of the Soviet program. The second important point uh, are the contact uh, between top uh, people of Soviet government and a person uh, having uh, so-called uh, psychic and uh, healing abilities. Uh, many references point to contact between Stalin and Wolf Messing. Especially important are contact between Leonid Brezhnev and Juna. Uh, to some extent, Juna um, is a mother of, uh, of Soviet unconventional program because exactly after this contact, uh, Brezhnev initiated uh, this research. Uh, and ask uh, scientific people for measurement, for proven evidences. And of course, contact between uh, Boris Yeltsin and the cool group of uh, Camel uh, Extrasense is well known. Uh, this uh, point is especially important because uh, it allows to understand uh, this interest uh, from, from Soviet uh, government to this, uh, let's say, uh, phenomena, and after this uh, level of funding uh, spent uh, in the research. 
Unconventional research in Soviet Union has uh, three important components. First of all, it appeared and uh, was developed in a kind of political and later on uh, Cold War isolation, though it took a specific shape. Secondly, it uh, was always a relationship between people and government and uh, persons with these capabilities. And uh, lastly, what is uh, really important, uh, Soviet ideology imposed constraints so that uh, researchers have to concentrate on technology, on devices, on measurement, and remove all these mystic components from the research. Unconventional research uh, can be divided in four time periods, uh, before October Revolution, uh, between October Revolution and uh, around the Second World War, uh, between 55 and 80, and large program started from 80 up to 2003-2005. Uh, from thematical point of view, uh, we also observe four points. Uh, the first one is a classical parapsychology, uh, with extrasensory perception, with transferring mental images with people with specific abilities. Uh, Professor Bechterev initiated this um, uh, research. Uh, the second line is uh, psychotronic. Uh, this is exactly uh, this uh, research was uh, known as the Soviet program. This, uh, this was born in uh, the Soviet countries. Uh, many uh, socialist countries like Czechoslovakia participated in this research quite actively. Uh, it is uh, related for looking for emission explaining this psi phenomena for device based research for measurement. Uh, Professor Turligin uh, was in, uh, in the beginning of this program. We also uh, observe um, a specific uh, program related to impact of uh, radio frequency emission on human brain. There was many aspects similar to programs uh, like MK Ultra in US, uh, what currently lead to appearance of non-lethal uh, viewpoints. Uh, many uh, programs or sub-programs here are classified. And finally, we also observe a number of independent researchers like um, Chizhevsky or Kozarev, uh, who not was not really involved in the state program and their impact on this research in those time was pretty much limited. A start of, um, of this research program was uh, typical uh, for the time. It was a spiritualistic movement uh, from US exported first to Europe and then to Russia and uh, of course many people was interested in uh, that phenomena. Uh, a commission uh, led by Professor Mendeleev uh, investigated them and uh, after the report was published uh, a huge discussion appeared in the community. Some people was uh, for existence of that phenomena, some people were strongly against. Uh, nevertheless, um, around the uh, beginning of the uh, 20th uh, century, uh, unconventional phenomena was already a part of uh, social life. And um, by some reason, uh, all this uh, discussion and publication was concentrated on uh, telepathic uh, uh, effects. And, uh, and uh, we will see that even later on, after revolution and after Second World War, uh, this uh, telepathic uh, system was uh, part and a specific part, essential part of the Soviet program. It needs to be said uh, that um, this development uh, was, of course, uh, specific as the telepathic, uh, the concentration on telepathy was specific for Russia at this time, but uh, was not really different from other countries. So at least we observe a similar phenomena or similar movements in the US, for instance, appearance of radionics. And in radionic also assumed a kind as a first a kind of electromagnetic phenomena that was behind them. Uh, even people look for some frequencies or rate. So in this term, uh, all this uh, movement are very similar. After revolution, everything changed. Uh, different ideology appeared, uh, was a different people, uh, different society. As a, as a consequent, uh, consequence, all um, 
independent parapsychological organization, journal, uh, congresses, uh, conferences, uh, almost everything was closed. We expect that uh, the whole parapsychology will be closed forever in the Soviet Union, but it is not so. Um, about 1924, uh, it's uh, six years after the revolution, uh, the parapsychological research uh, become uh, coordinated, it started and become coordinated uh, by government. The reason probably is this idea of uh, telepathic control over people it was attractive to Soviet government and they uh, started a program to uh, research uh, this phenomena. Um, uh, government started three uh, streamlines of this research. The first one um, was related to uh, finding experimental evidence of telepathy, transfer of mental images, and remote and impact of biological object. Uh, institute in Leningrad was asked uh, and was funded uh, to perform this research. This was uh, very well done, all these experiments. For instance, here it's uh, 1932, 1934, 1935, and uh, the distance uh, between, let's say, the, for this telepathic uh, influence is uh, 25 meter, 500 meter, 4 kilometer, 7 kilometer from Sevastopol to Leningrad, and the number of person and animal was involved. Uh, the second uh, line was uh, related to uh, uh, clarification of physical nature of telepathy. Um, as was assumed originally, it uh, assumed it had a kind of uh, electromagnetic uh, emission. And an institute in Moscow, led by Professor Turligin, uh, was asked to perform this research. Um, the people first started uh, drawing them schemes um, based on electromagnetic uh, emissions, performing some experiments. It was uh, quite uh, immediately clear it's not really related to uh, electromagnetism. And uh, by the way, uh, to the same conclusion come out of the first group in Leningrad. The last uh, streamline uh, was uh, related to research about biological active electromagnetic emission. Um, this uh, research uh, was, for instance, performed by Ferdinand Katsamal in Italy, Manfred for Ardenia in Germany, and of course in uh, Soviet Union, and related to um, so-called brain emission. Uh, even uh, was found a wavelength, about two millimeters of this emission, and uh, strong impact on different uh, physiological activities and, and psychic uh, state of human. Um, after um, almost uh, 15 years, a uh, program was closed. Uh, it was, of course, difficult time uh, before the Second World War. Uh, many people were arrested. Um, only Professor Turligin in Moscow, um, in the laboratory of biophysics, uh, published a few results. Uh, most of this publication was done already uh, in the uh, revival, in the uh, period after uh, the 60s. And uh, uh, we know there is a number of evidences about this uh, classified research, but uh, official uh, documents are still uh, not declassified. We observe the first evidences of revival of uh, unconventional research after Second World War. In the 50s, for instance, 52, uh, the Turligan Laboratory started. Um, in uh, 58, uh, the discussion in Academy of Science started. Uh, for instance, here in uh, 61, uh, Academy of Science took a decision to, um, to start this research again. And uh, here, uh, exactly at this time, uh, we observe a number of published books uh, from experiments done in uh, the 30s. For instance, uh, Dr. Kaczynski, uh, Biological Networks, uh, Professor Vasiliev. Um, and uh, what is the most important, uh, all this uh, first research from, seven, from 60s lead to an important decision in 73. Uh, done by Central Committee of Communist Part, uh, Party. I need to say this is the highest, it is really the, the highest, top highest uh, decision instance. And this uh, agency uh, considers, absolutely seriously considers the question, should uh, this, uh, I mean, this investigation, this research, this development uh, be performed further with the highest level of funding. 
and uh, the decision was yes uh, we need to expand uh, paranormal research i mean this report and uh, all this critical mass of, uh, of investigation and decision was published by almost all uh, journals around the world um, some uh, interesting example for instance a report of cia uh, state that in the time around uh, 68 about uh, 27 institution uh, uh, deal with uh, different uh, un different uh, issues and unconventional research for instance uh, Kirlian effect uh, human biofield and so on and so on one example uh, of performing experiment in those time um, this uh, very famous pair of experiment with uh, twin rabbits uh, one of twin uh, uh, received implanted electrodes in brain and another twin was uh, removed in the distance of about uh, seven kilometers and uh, here by stimulating electrodes in brain uh, uh, brain activity of the second uh, uh, rabbit was measured by EEG and people find a strong correlation in time between stimulation signal and uh, brain activity of the second rabbit um, this at least part of this research was open and was published and it show more or less how this experiment was organized two person uh, become very uh, famous in this time as a phenomenon of thermal optical perception demonstrated by Rosa Kulishova and especially uh, in 60s by Ninel Kulagina in 70s uh, psychokinesis uh, with Ninel uh, a number of different institute was uh, I mean, measuring and dealing with this phenomenon because uh, this is so evident um, uh, this effect was demonstrated a number of time uh, so there was uh, measured whatever people can measure and uh, you, you can think uh, the, when the search was about 10 years with this person uh, it was uh, people confirmed what uh, was uh, really uh, I mean the movement was registered but uh, they of course uh, have no explanation of all of these effects uh, even uh, foreign uh, journalists they come uh, to Moscow and uh, this for instance movie was uh, done by a German journalist in one of the hotel absolutely unofficially and uh, people was uh, surprised as one of the most evident example of telekinesis known in the history It's absolutely amazing. The most important breakthrough uh, from this time was related to understanding that uh, this effect is related to non-vitalistic emission. And uh, many different hypotheses and theory was tested in those time. For instance, one of them it's uh, impact of rotating objects, so called pandematoric forces as I first explored by Professor Mishkin um, uh, idea of uh, kind of secondary emission related to non-electromagnetism uh, expressed by uh, by Chizhevsky first and so called uh, Chizhev's Wilhaver uh, effect that microorganism react uh, hours in advance uh, to sun emissions or changes in the sun activities a uh, well-known Kozarev effect, the Kozarev explores the true position of star in the sky and uh, evidently demonstrated that uh, basically uh, some emission is uh, coming from the true position of stars. Uh, this well-known name Grebennikov, he as a biologist in the Academy of Science in Novosibirsk, um, explored effect of passive object, I mean, so for instance kind of uh, uh, B wax or hexagonal cells they uh, created uh, absolutely evident effect on uh, plants and animals and uh, humans 
And all of them uh, came to more or less understanding that whatever it is, it cannot be shielded by any metal or concrete or whatever shields. It's very biologically active, both for plants and animals. It participates in long distance effects. It can be, for instance, transferred through uh, large distances. It's to some extent related to light and electromagnetism, but it's not electromagnetism. It is very important. It's not vitalistic, so it's, I mean, uh, it's a physical phenomena. It's well repeatable. So uh, it's about 75 up to 85 percent of repetition, and the number of, of, of names appeared as a non-electromagnetic emission, high penetrating, uh, microlepton field, spinner field, tarsion field. I mean, there is really a number of notions that appears. And all of them are created to a uh, start of a large program that uh, we know uh, they started from 1980s. The time uh, between uh, 80 and uh, about 95 is the most productive uh, period of the program. Um, about um, six, uh, between six and 900 uh, people on the level of doctor of science uh, or professor uh, in different research institution of academy of science uh, over the whole country was involved, and this research is no longer concentrated only in Moscow or St. Petersburg. This institution, a uh, broad spectrum of different research topic uh, was, uh, was investigated. For instance, it was the beginning of uh, this informational uh, pharmacology, a start of development of different active and passive generators for this emission. A uh, number of uh, sensors capable of detecting and characterizing this emission. Uh, first uh, experiment on long range signal as a non electromagnetic signal transmission started. Uh, even uh, agencies uh, in s involved with persons with specific capabilities in their operation, and a military unit uh, was created and uh, it operated up to 2003. Uh, which basically deal with these uh, results of unconventional research in the Soviet Union. We give you a few examples of uh, topic selected for implementation. Uh, there's, uh, for instance, new quantum communication technologies, uh, materials with new physical properties based on uh, imprinting uh, technology, new sensing approaches, um, we also know that there are several closed programs uh, approved, uh, for instance, control over biological system and, and similars. They are classified. Uh, these uh, are examples of these uh, active uh, generators developed in those time. Uh, this is example of this uh, non-genetic, uh, non-genetic uh, biological experiment of crossing different plant species. It's uh, performed by uh, John Kanjain in uh, in eighties. There's a later experiment on uh, again non-genetic uh, uh, mutation of of uh, biological organism. That's uh, quite well known uh, in in Soviet Union and in Russian. Uh, this experiment are very similar to uh, to experiments uh, performed by Luc Montagnier in 2010 uh, with this uh, uh, replication of DNA from uh, electromagnetic activation of water. Um, this is example of first experiment uh, with long range non electromagnetic symbol uh, signal transmission. It was performed in uh, 86 in Moscow uh, for the first time, and the distance uh, about uh, about 20 kilometers in Moscow. So uh, this is a signal uh, on the sending side, and receiving uh, signals are uh, plants. So in plant tissue, it was very targeted. So from several plants, only targeted plants reacted in that way. So it uh, was a uh, great uh, progress in, in those time. Uh, after this, uh, the, this experiment was uh, replicated many times. This one of our replication in 2003-2040. It's a much larger distance uh, between Stuttgart and Perth in uh, Australia. And here you see a response of, uh, of fluid uh, sensor, this electro based on electrochemistry. Uh, up to now, we repeated this about 900 times, so it's a large statistic uh, collected. 
uh, and uh, well it's a number of publications you can find more details there uh, this is an interesting example what uh, I would like to show uh, this more or less uh, uh, demonstrates the principle of this signal transmission so here we have uh, tubes uh, with overcooled water uh, these tubes are extremely sensitive to almost everything uh, any mechanical distortion or some non-local impact and here about 10 meters away we have impacting system uh, based on laser and, uh, and LED and so this, this tube is targeted so impact uh, so duration is about 20 minutes and you see uh, the targeted tube uh, frozen almost I mean this is this frozen process very fast so and after this we performed experiment further and further and no uh, so no other tube uh, become frozen so it's more or less demonstrated how this uh, non electromagnetic signal uh, transmission then work Uh, now I would like to say a little bit about um, sensors, uh, about uh, electrochemical sensors. Uh, they appear exactly in this uh, period of, uh, of this research program. Uh, the first experiment was performed by uh, Sakalova in the beginning of, of 80s. Um, uh, Bobrov uh, in 80s, 90s and after this. Uh, Zinin is uh, also very famous, uh, who performed a number of experiments based on, based on electrochemistry and uh, different weak emissions. Um, so we also uh, contribute to this research uh, and extend this research. So um, it is important to keep three points. So it's a uh, the thermostabilization, so samples and the electronic system should be thermostabilized. As a secondly, it needs to perform always differential uh, uh, measurements. And finally, uh, the system should provide a great resolution. So all of them are satisfied here. So we develop potentiometry so for, for measuring pH in, in fluids. And uh, what we are concentrating now, it's uh, also a very sensitive approach. It's based on the uh, impedance spectroscopy. So in the simplest form, it's measuring conductivity. In more complex form, it's measuring uh, frequency response of fluid. So it's in this way, uh, weak emission can be even characterized by this device. Uh, here are a few examples. Uh, for instance, uh, sensitivity to a system was measured by insertion uh, uh, fresh green leaf. So the, 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 the measurement tube here is an electrode and we insert a green leaf here and after a while remove it and you see in the dynamics either these uh, points uh, where the leaf was inserted is a delay of dynamic of course and uh, when we remove it's well observable. In um, impedance spectroscopy is mostly uh, is the most suitable for research in informational pharmacology. For instance, it can detect the fact of uh, activation of fluid. Um, I mean, it can detect the intensity of activation, and even uh, such uh, effects like imprinting phenomena. Uh, with different uh, symbolic and non-symbolic labels with local and remote approach. So we receive in case of uh, imprinted fluids and non-imprinted fluids absolutely different approach. So for instance here you see uh, this fluid here was imprinted and uh, we receive a quite of characteristic response uh, and uh, this a control and this is a control and here is measurement after a while so we do not see any uh, imprinting uh, so any uh, no longer a difference between fluids so imprinting uh, effect is disappeared after after a few a few weeks so uh, at least uh, this uh, uh, impedance spectroscopy is a very promising approach is very fast it can be used in laboratory and in field condition so, and uh, you will see today uh, later on a demonstration of this device and this uh, this measurement. So we think it's one of the most interesting devices for further application here. In conclusion, uh, first of all, uh, we point to a number of uh, high-ranking uh, publications in Nature and Science that actively discuss uh, issues of uh, application of quantum phenomena for an entanglement in microscopic system. Exactly this phenomena was considered in the field of unconventional research and was explored all, all, all that time. 
uh, not only physical effect but uh, many effects in biology and uh, and uh, in consciousness uh, become now a part of uh, social and scientific discussion and we hope uh, that uh, by this uh, development uh, at least a part of unconventional research agenda uh, can become uh, conventional and uh, can be explored in an academia level at universities uh, with academic publication and funded uh, with a normal uh, grant system in relation to this uh, presentation, um, we uh, basically demonstrated that Soviet Union, but uh, like we said, uh, US, uh, China and Germany, um, they have a large uh, funded programs in uh, in, uh, in US there was from 90s up to 2003-2005. And in this program, a large number of effect uh, phenomena uh, devices uh, have been uh, discovered and developed. And um, the specific area of research, this uh, device-based psychotronic, is appeared. And uh, most of these uh, devices of sensing approaches of this uh, information and imprinting effect, then that have been uh, have been explored and developed exactly in this area of, of psychotronics. To conclude, I would like to stress three important uh, issues. Uh, first of all, many people ask us, uh, well, do you really believe that uh, all of this uh, weak emission, uh, weak uh, phenomena, do they really exist? And then our answer is yes, they exist, they, we really measure, we receive results, uh, but uh, all of these phenomena are really weak. In many cases, response of uh, physical, chemical, biological, microbiological system is on the level of noise and we have to apply specific schemes to extract this data. Uh, sometimes impact of temperature is even higher than impact of these experimental factors. So uh, keep this always in mind so that we deal with really weak phenomena. We also hope that uh, this new quantum methodology and new quantum understanding of, of the, the world especially in application to macroscopic system, it can provide a kind of explanation to whatever results or phenomena we observe in our research. Secondly, uh, in the last 100 years, we observed a number of cases uh, with a vigorous misusage of these research results. I mean, this was in, in the US, there was in the Soviet Union, there was in Germany. Uh, we hope that uh, one of the key points of the future research uh, is the keeping of ethical issues. Whatever, I mean, whatever you do in this field, do it ethically. And the lastly, we also observe in the uh, last 20 years a growth of different application fields of this unconventional research. There was a field of metallurgy, new materials, there was a quantum communication, now it's this uh, informational uh, pharmacology. I hope that we all will contribute to uh, grow of these fields and to appearance of new field. In these terms, uh, I would like to uh, you thank you very much for your attention, uh, for this uh, short presentation, and I hope uh, we can meet each other in one of these uh, meetings or events that uh, uh, taking place quite frequently now over the whole world. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm.